House Republicans are raising more concerns about now special counsel David Weiss and pushing ahead with their investigations into Hunter Biden, no matter what Weiss is doing. A new report says an unearthed 32 pages, a letter reveals Hunter Biden's legal team at one point threatened to put the president on the stand. What followed was the infamous sweetheart plea deal that fell apart. We're also now learning that special counsel David Weiss once worked with President Biden's late son, Beau, on a 2010 fraud case. Weiss was Delaware's acting U.S. attorney uh, at that time. Actually, he's still the U.S. attorney of Delaware, which we've talked about being a conflict of interest. Anyway, he and Beau Biden uh, were also, Beau Biden actually was also working with the U.S. attorney's office. Uh, this and another report says David Weiss did not plan to charge Hunter Biden until IRS whistleblowers came forward about his alleged tax fraud. Lawyers for Gary Shapley and Joseph Ziegler, the whistleblowers, said, quote, it appears that if it weren't for the courageous actions of these whistleblowers, Hunter Biden would never have been charged at all. Here's former assistant U.S. attorney Andy McCarthy. In the Hunter Biden case, here you have exhibit A of how the scheme worked. You have these big, bad Justice Department prosecutors who aren't supposed to be afraid of anything. They got this guy dead to rights on a 10-year gun felony and tax evasion charges, and they're afraid to charge him. They don't want to charge Joe Biden's son. This is exactly what access to Joe Biden is. Mm. This is why people were willing to pay millions of dollars to get it. That's what the scheme was. Phil Holloway is here now, former assistant district attorneys. Phil, how shocked are you that at one point they wanted to put President Biden on the stand? I mean, were they, were they seeing what the rest of the country was seeing for like a heartbeat and then they changed their minds? What do you think was happening? Well, Harris, this shows why influence peddling is such a big deal. There's a reason why the, pro the lawyers for the defense uh, threatened the prosecutors with the name Joe Biden. That shows, that shows what the purchasing power of that name is. They bought themselves, if you will, a sweetheart deal because it's a threat. It's a threat to Weiss. If you go after this guy, we're going to bring in your boss. And he is their boss. There's, there's the attorney general in between, but let there be no doubt Hmm. Weiss works for the Department of Justice that works for Joe Biden. Listen, prosecutors, Harris, have a, a different ethical burden than regular old defense lawyers or anybody else. They've got an obligation to do justice, whatever that means. And it means objectively following facts and evidence to wherever it may lead without any kind of bias or prejudice. And that also means that if you have a conflict of interest or even the appearance of a conflict of interest, you might need to think about recusing so, yourself. This should have been done by a truly outside lawyer. I, I, I got to tell you that the road is so windy and connective tissue is so thick between this special counsel and the Biden family. How surprised were you to learn that as the U.S. attorney, the acting U.S. attorney for the state of Delaware, the president of the United States home, and his former now deceased son, Beau, who was a state's attorney at the time, well, they were working together. I mean, it's the history with David Weiss and this family. Isn't that automatically a conflict of interest? I think so. Look, they're very close. Now, you just mentioned the working relationship, the hand-in-glove working relationship between Weiss and the late Beau Biden. And now you're going to investigate uh, Bo Biden's son and the, excuse me, brother and the son of the president, Joe Biden. Hmm. This is what influence peddling is, Dana. Just like uh, in the segment just before, uh, what Andy McCarthy was heard saying, this is why we need an outside counsel. This is why Joe Biden's Justice Department cannot adequately, I think, handle the investigation into Hunter Biden. I'm Listen, just... if they wanted to go after him, Harris, they could have done so on this gun charge. It is it is wrapped in a bow, sealed and delivered for mm -hmm. them to get a conviction. But here we are approaching the statute of limitations on that with no indictment. It's, I think the statute of limitations on that runs in uh, October, if I'm not mistaken. And any other potential crimes that he may have committed that are subject but they'll to the sit on their hands. five year uh, statute of limitations, those charges are dropping by the wayside by the day. Yeah, they'll sit on their hands and, and let innocence just fall into his lap, I guess. 
or at least non-prosecution, because there's a difference between that and innocence. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer on Sunday Morning Futures talked about the obstacles the House GOP are facing in the Hunter Biden investigation. Let's watch. We are facing obstruction uh, like has never been uh, demonstrated in the history of congressional investigations. Not only are we being obstructed by the Biden legal team, we're being obstructed by the Department of Justice. We're being obstructed by the FBI, by the Secret Service, by the IRS, by the Democrats on the House Oversight Committee. Well, isn't that the plan? Because if it's not, then it looks like, you know, the DOJ just got lucky. They should go to Vegas. Well, that, that's why we heard the lawyers in the plea deal that went south when they were in court. They said they were eager to say, yes, there is there's still an ongoing investigation, but they wouldn't go into any details and tell us what kind of investigation. It's just enough information to plausibly be able to tell Congress that Weiss and nobody else is going to go before Congress and answer any of these questions because it's an ongoing investigation, wink, wink. Right. Uh, the bottom line is this. The name Joe Biden terrifies people at the top levels of the Justice Department. They don't want to do anything to cross Joe Biden. Why? This is why the Joe Biden name has been used in influence peddling on the world stage, because at least in those circles, it carries weight. If it carries weight overseas, it certainly carries a lot of weight in his own Justice Department. Wow. I mean, I ask, why are they so terrified of the man? Um, but you just pointed it out. I mean, it's well, they're going to lose their jobs. They're afraid if their their career is going to be shot. They're afraid that if they go after Hunter uh, too hard, then it's going to make Joe mad, and that could be the end of a a federal prosecutor's career if they get crossways with the commander in chief, who is at the top of their food chain and who is their ultimate boss. Wow, there's got to be some group of attorneys, maybe led by you yourself, my friend Phil <laughs> Holloway, who'll tell those people that somebody has their backs if they'll just tell the truth. Like, you'd think they'd want to do it anywhere, but I understand what's at stake. But still, there's got to be a way. Phil, i got to let you go. Thank you for being with me in Focus today. Always happy to be with you, Harris. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.